advice I give are normally not very difficult to understand or to follow. It just people are used to doing certain things and behaving in a certain way. And if I tell them to change that behavior because it would change their uh, uh, appearance or their, their way of thinking and everything, then they very often think uh, that they can't do it. I have many patients who have been to six, seven, eight different drinks, psychologists, uh, and uh, uh, they come and say, nobody could help me. And my first thought is, did you actually want help or did you just want to tell your problems? Because that is what we very often tend to do. We want to have listeners. Because when you have a lot of problems, you can't tell them your friends anymore or your family. Everybody's fed up with them. Sure. So you go to a professional, you pay whatever it costs, and then you start talking. And after a couple of times, you ask, uh, what shall I do? You haven't helped me yet. Uh, yeah, then I tell what to do. Uh huh. Okay, and then they go. Sometimes they come back and say it didn't help. Sometimes they don't even come back again. And that is simple. If she goes to one after the other, and we all tell more or less the same, because problems are, the problems she has are obvious in one way or the other, and there's always solutions for them. And um, when they don't listen to it, they don't do it, they won't be helped. And they will blame it on the professionals, the so-called professionals, as she will mention, or he will mention. But I have to be honest, there are more women who do not uh, uh, tend to work on, their, on, on, on the recommendations than there are men. And why is that, do you think? I think the men very often have uh, a goal inside. In order to achieve this goal, achieve this goal, they need to do what I tell them. Yeah. And they're thinking without thinking. Oh God! Others have told me the same shit. They think about what I tell, and they say, "Yeah, that sounds right. I give it a try." So I have more success in this form from, with men than with women. Uh, but on the other hand, okay, I have also a lot of women who, who uh, uh, do what I tell them. Just yeah. proportional, it's more than men. And, and why is it sometimes <clears throat> that that happens, where people sort of feel good because they've said what they wanted to say, but they're not, or maybe don't have the energy to work on, you know, afterwards, how to fix themselves? I think there's always a momentum of, of uh, hope that uh, maybe this shrink will know something else. But maybe the answers I would give are the same that others would give because they are the natural answers. And maybe it gives them in other words because I always put them in, in connection to the personality I can see in my patient. But uh, still, <coughs> and when, when they hear that, then, uh, well, I've tried that. They've never tried it. They've listened to it, but they've never tried it because they didn't believe in it. That's one of the big problems. You see, I can almost repair any kind of an illness if the patient does what I tell them. Because I cannot do anything on my own. I can only give help so you can help yourself. That's it. And my patient has to be, has to be aware of that fact that I am not a hocus pocus man. Yeah. I'm not God. I'm nothing. I'm just a guy who happens to know a lot of answers where others don't. But the work you have to do, it's you who has to do it. The hard work, I guess, comes when the person has to actually take the advice and go through it. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, you know enough. You know enough of my patients to know uh, 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 because you send them to me. Well, to know whether it helped or not, yeah, and whether they actually took the advice or they didn't, yeah, and if they did take the advice, 
then it was hard work. Yeah. But the result always came. Uh, people very often tend to think a hell of a lot before they go and pay a guy like me. Meaning, they think, oh, I could have done that, I could do this, I could do that, and so on and so on. <laughs> so many times they have the feeling, I've already done that. That all they've done is maybe think about it, but not doing it. Yeah. Uh, so whenever I, as a psychologist, come and tell them something completely different, which they actually have been thinking about before, but not done, yeah, then they think, okay, let's try it. So there is a good chance. But you see, I have to know the patient. And that is, I think, where a lot of my colleagues have difficulties. Because uh, uh, when you are so quick, uh, and I think that helps the ADHD that I have. Uh, when you're so quick in analyzing and finding, and finding who is who, finding out the weaknesses, the strengths and everything of the patient, then it's easy to help them. If you don't know it, then you need at least maybe six, seven, eight times before you know them well enough to start thinking about a solution. Yeah. Where I already can give the solution on the first time of one of them and can start working immediately because when a patient comes, it's very important that the patient realizes, shit, this guy knows me. <laughs> yeah? uh, this guy knows everything about me. Because I then maybe have a little bit of help from upstairs. Uh, I know a lot about them and tell them right away, confront them with it right away. And I can see them nod and wow, yeah. And this already helps a lot to, to, uh, to, to give it a good start. Look here, before we end today, I would like to give a little advice to one of my patients in Sweden. Hi, M. Are you listening now? See here, they're so hard to hold and they're almost near. Den ångesten har ju följt dig ganska så mång, lång tid. Jag kommer ihåg att helt i början, det var cirka 40 år sedan, då fick vi den något som är under kontroll. Men sen försvann jag, du försvann, jag kunde inte göra någonting mer. Men eh, vad vi har, det är känner de om varandra. Så om du ser detta här nu, så kan jag tala om för dig din ångest, min vän. Den är inte indiskutabel. Den är inte eh, eh, anonym. Den ångest som du har haft för och som du har kämpat med för. Och där du får lov att gå tillbaka den tiden när det var akut. Och när vi gjorde någonting vid det. Om du har panikattacken i hjärtat så finns det inget annat för dig att göra än att titta på hur de uppstår. Och också att se vad du har gjort tidigare för att ta död på dem. Du vet mycket väl att alla de där, de där tankarna som du har, de är producerade av din egen hjärna, också producerade av din egen hjärna. Och det är din hjärna som kan stoppa det hela, men kanske genom att du gör en enkel liten grej. Att säga very, helt, helt enkelt att... Fan, är jag rädd för egentligen? Jag bygger allting på att jag har en ångest. Men vad har jag ångest för? Finns det egentligen någon som helst anledning att ha den där ångesten? Eller är det så att min hjärna bygger upp den själv? Är det det som håller på att hända? Du vet, jag kan inte göra särskilt mycket via videon här. Men vad jag kan göra... Det talar om för dig. Du kan klara den. Och du kommer att klara den. Men du måste tro på dig själv också. Du måste själv göra den där insatsen att tro på dig och säga till dig själv. Vad är det för skit jag håller på med? Det är inte någonting med att ah, ta det lugnt. Nej, nej, nej. Du har ångesten. Den finns det absolut. Så försök att göra som jag säger. Ja, om du kan så installera den där förbannade Skype. 
För med Skype kan du ringa upp mig när som helst. Det kostar inte ett öre. Och vi kan tala hur länge som helst. Okej. Okay. Var nu riktigt, riktigt, riktigt rädd om dig. Och gör som jag säger. Kom på dig. Hej.